necessarily fits the charge, but we feel like they're just as complicit in the and to be honest, you know, if this is going to be a racketeering case, possibly they should look into the hotel, the management, how things were done in terms of them receiving money. Because think about this, in a racketeering case, money is always one of the things that makes a, a criminal enterprise, a criminal organization. And if Diddy's handing someone $50,000, a large amount of cash, to suppress or delete or hide or get rid of or store whatever evidence, potential evidence of a crime, that person is also complicit in some sort of obstruction of justice right you know what i mean uh, like it's, it's like yo if you kill a nigga and then you, you pay somebody to say yo well you ain't kill a nigga but if you could help me move the body from here to there that person is kind of you know what i mean now um because the body essentially is evidence you know what i mean like you're tampering with evidence is that third i'm wondering if they're complicit in anything i'm pretty sure there's gonna be some subpoenas served um to isg even though they don't supposedly operate that hotel anymore but, yo, let's knock down some doors. Let's figure out their dealings with Diddy. We want to see all financial records with Diddy and the, the entire company. Has he ever paid a, a settlement? Has he ever sent a large amount of money? We've heard about damages, like tens of thousands of dollars in damages. But, our, w w like, we might need proof of that. We don't know if maybe he just broke some TVs. Maybe he beat another bitch up and he paid y'all off and y'all called it damages and y'all just bust down the money or however it was. Who knows how it is? So I, I could imagine the feds are probably going to check into the hotel as well. But again, this is coming underneath this criminal, you know, if we're thinking about it as a RICO. Now, here's the thing. So the people in the hotel, they seem like pieces of shit. The bodyguards, the guys who are even now saying, yo, let me let, let me speak up. Oh, I'm on an interview tour and I'm not speaking about anyone in, in directly. But, you know, if, if, you know, you guys are now going around and, profiting because they're getting paid for these interviews trust and believe they're not doing these interviews for free they're getting paid for these interviews and yes we're, we are glad that they're sharing information and speaking the truth now but it kind of goes to well why didn't you step in initially why didn't you alert the authorities why didn't you do something when you could rather than wait 20 years to then tell the story of what you saw that also becomes problematic but this one guy's been kind of interesting to me his name is roger bond right roger bond Let's go to YouTube because he was teasing at a, a point. He was like, yo, I might know. No, he was just like, he basically was teasing with a bunch of like posts. Let, let's look it up. Roger Bond cryptic. Like he was making really cryptic posts about the Cassie thing. This is what he said. This is not meant to be threats or snitching or anything like that. That's another thing already. If, 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 if you thought, Speaking about or speaking up against domestic violence was snitching. That's a problem, right? It says, uh, like that against Cassie or Diddy, this is me telling my truth. And I remember it for two reasons only. First, I have four daughters. So all the dudes, my my truth as I see it. So on all dudes, what? Okay, anyway. Now, keep in mind, he teased cryptic messages literally for weeks before then coming out and saying, uh, it was like they fought like any other couple, you know, I, I think he was on a Danza project, right? Was he on a Danza project? Danza project, Roger Bonds. And he basically said, nah, they just fought like he downplayed it. Like, oh no, I didn't really, you know what I mean? Um, let me see if I can find it. Oh yeah. He spoke about it here. He basically said, Cassie's just as wrong as Diddy. Keep in mind, he was being mad cryptic all along. Look. It was okay to say, yo, we're going to be in Miami this weekend. Because before that, we couldn't say what we was doing and where we was going. So he, I just want to point out that that social media is new to me. But it also gets you results. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And that's why you're here today on the Dancer Project. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Wouldn't be no way else. Shout out to Dancer Project. So, so that's when I came out. Because, I, like I said, I got daughters. You know what I'm saying? So when you mentioned my name in a lawsuit, which I, I don't know, we're going to speak to a lawyer because I don't know if she used that as leverage to get the money she got, but I feel like she should have hollered at me and said, yo. That is the problem, chat, with this whole thing. Everybody's morality is based on some money. Think about it, chat. The first thing he says is not that, oh, I'm mentioning a lawsuit and she got supposedly paid. Let me, he says, mm, maybe she should have hollered at me because she probably used my name to go get the bread. What does that say, chat? 
It goes to why Diddy was probably able to do this and no evidence came out. And again, I'm not trying to, I'm not doing a defense of where I say, well, you know, these guys are guilty too. But I'm, but, but I kind of look at this whole situation as the reason why it was allowed to happen for this long is shitty humans who were able to turn the other cheek or turn the other way or turn the other eye, I mean, or tur turn their head the other way, just for some money. Right? It's my name in the lawsuit. So that's when I came out because, I, like I said, I got daughters. You know what I'm saying? So when you mention my now, name. Now, again, and, 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 you know, I, I know you'll probably see this. I'm not trying to get at you, my brother. You know, you, you that is this is not what this is. But I'm just pointing out the hypocrisy in what you said. You said you came out because you have daughters. And, and that makes sense. Like, if you if you feel like this guy has been evil to woman or whatever, and you felt you needed to speak up, even though you could have spoke up decades ago, cool. But then you switch it from you have daughters to, wait, I wonder if she leveraged me to get the bread. I'm in a lawsuit, which I, I don't know. We're going to speak to a lawyer because I don't know if she used that as leverage to get the money she got. But I feel like she should have hollered at me and said, yo, I'm. The victim should have called up Roger Bond and said, hey, Diddy's about to give me 30 mil. You want some? Instead of saying, hey, I'm speaking up for what's right. What's right is that. For years, Diddy violated this woman. I tried to help by A, B, C, and D, but unfortunately, I, it was only so much I could do. That nigga is wrong. He's talking about the bread. I'm getting ready to put your name in this, da 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 Same thing. She know what I'm going through with my son. So she could have said, yo, I'm getting ready to do such and such and such. If such and such come through, I got a couple of dollars for you for your son. So I... This also goes back to... My thing with Diddy, again, we're not defending Diddy at all. I got to give these disclaimers for people clip me and try to take it out of context. But it kind of goes to the fact of, yo, Diddy, if you were doing all these wild things and you used to get away with it with money, you do know when you, you're a fucked up person, you do things continually fucked up. You essentially sign lifetime contract with the people who have to either bear the secrets for you for life or have to continually be complicit in the fucker you're doing. So, again, if you got the 30 mil to pay Cassie, you know, I, I was just watching this movie, which I which have read the reviews. I heard it's like horrible. It's, it's this show on Netflix. It's called um, Fool Me Once. I don't know if y'all watched it. I don't know, like, fuck it up for y'all if y'all do watch it. And essentially, it was like this, about this rich family. And this rich family, you know, who was kind of doing a lot of little shady shit, you know what I mean? They would put people on payroll for life. Damn near. It was like, all right, cool. Some shit happened back in the 80s. We know we going to need you to shut the fuck up unless we kill you. Here's a little check monthly for the rest of your life. Like they, they were looking at the books and like, damn, I've been paying this motherfucker for 20 years. Like why? Yeah, this person might know a little something. So when, so when I look at Diddy and I'm like, well, you got like a lot of disgruntled niggas who are saying they just needed some money. It's not even like they're really not saying, oh, yeah, let's get Diddy. They're just saying, yo, bro, like my, my, my son's in a fucked up position like. Shit ain't going for me right, bro. Like, yo, you, you even had Keefy D at one point. It was like, yo, brother love. Show some love. Like, you know what I mean? You have a lot of people who say, bro, bro, just share a little bit of the wealth. Like, yo, we allowed you to do all this fuck shit. Why not? Why didn't Diddy take them serious? Or did he get so pompous and arrogant to say, fuck y'all. I've used y'all. I could discard y'all. And I'm so high up, I've leveled up every time I discarded one of y'all motherfuckers who are disposable in my book that once I discarded y'all, I can't come back around and come, come, come step on this empire? Get out of here. That, that was a grave mistake, correct? I ain't taking sides when it comes to that situation because I look at her being just as wrong as him. Mm. But for all the people that say that I'm looking for clout off of it, my name got brought into it. You know what I'm saying? So when y'all was going through everything that y'all was going through, I never jumped out the window. I never said nothing. I just, I had my beef with Puff individually. You know what I'm saying? For not standing on 10 toes with my son. That was my beef. It wasn't until later on where everything else came into play. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to be honest with you. Some of those things I knew and some of them things I didn't know. So I don't think it's fair for people to say I knew everything that's going on. You know what I'm saying? Some of them I did know. Did I ever see him hit somebody? Yeah, I definitely did. Did I ever see him and Cassie fight? Yes, I definitely did. Did she, when she said that I came in between them fighting, did I do that? Yes, I definitely did. But I'm going to be 100% honest. I didn't think it was 
a wrong thing because I've never seen the things that she actually like the stomping out and the beating. And I've never seen stuff like that. I would jump into something after the first blow, like not on my watch. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, is that possible? Y'all think, chat? You know, so he's saying, I don't know, maybe he saw like a backhand at one slap or something like that, but he ain't see the the chronic like beatdowns and everything like uh, of the sort. Do you think it's possible that Diddy, um, do, do you think it's possible you could be around someone who witness like certain type of aggression and not, and be completely surprised that maybe if you the security guard, who your job is there to kind of make sure no one puts hands on your clients, but make sure an altercation doesn't happen around him. If, if, if you the security guard witness that, you don't think maybe, maybe not in front of you, but maybe behind when when you're not around. Like like someone made a great point about the video, right? They said if Diddy did this in public, if Diddy did this in public, what the fuck do you think he was doing in private? Like it's like he did this at the fucking Intercontinental by the elevator with a with a robe on. Don't you think in his crib he probably given issue in the A Town stomp? You know what I mean? Like, yo, he doing the block boy JB move on these chicks. Like, you don't think he was going crazy? You don't think he was throwing a a, 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 a Kurt Schilling fastball at these chicks and Mariano Rivera? Like, what you think? Anyway. Let's talk oh, about the uh, oh, oh, oh. Harvey Wine. Oh, we're going to we're gonna get to that in a second. My bad. That, to your point, you actually can't even wrong him because now the way the lawsuit came out and it's so divisive, it's like, the first question is, where's everybody who was complicit? So it's like, you got to pick a side. So you almost got to jump out the window and be like, hey, bro, I wasn't on it like that. You know what I'm saying? Right, Just right. speak your truth and let you know what's going on because now you could possibly be implicated. Because right, it's like a thing. It's like, you, you first of all, you think about your job, right? You think about your job. That's, hey, chat. With a lot of people who came out, which I, I wish all of these guys had sought an attorney before, even choosing to do these interviews, and I know they were getting paid. Because I don't think they realize in a moment, but you know, it's age it's aged so badly when y'all literally said, Oh, I had to choose between my job. And I and I guess that, that is a dilemma, right? Like, yo, if, if I speak up, I'm gonna lose my source of income. But you chat, you tell me, where do you judge someone who sits back complicitly and says, I'm gonna watch other humans get abused, I'm gonna watch people get taken advantage of. I'm going to watch very violent, heinous things happen to people. And I'm just not going to say nothing or it's not my business, mostly because I don't want to lose my job. Are those people pieces of shits or are those people like, yo, they got to pay their bills as long as they're not doing it or they're not helping it? Bro, you can't blame them. What do you feel about those people? Uh, and you say, this is my employer. You look at people when you see people that have spoken up for smaller things and then they don't have a job. So people say, oh, but your job wasn't. How many people work at the sanitation and everything else? They hate their job and things go wrong, but they never speak up because they're afraid of how they're going to pay their bills the next month. So a lot of those things, I was in that situation in that predicament. Yeah, if it was to get crazy, I wouldn't think about my job. Right. But then when you're around certain people, you're only going to do what you think that person would allow. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So... When she said, and I remember, I remember specifically what she's talking about when she said it was after an event on Sunset and her and Puff got into it. My thing was more or less. Okay, what was what was that? Sunset. Sunset. Let's let's go to Roger Bond. In the car, this is two thousand nine. In the car, da 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 da. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, wow. So Roger Bond is from like 2009. I don't know if he was around 2016. Hmm. Okay. Wait, what? I keep playing this, sorry. Arguing and fighting in front of some on Sunset right. Boulevard. What are y'all doing? Right. This is such and such. This is such and such. Yo, get the fuck in the car. You know what I'm saying? Because it works both ways. You know what I'm saying? I've seen him put his hands on her, and I've seen her put his hands on him. And see, that's what people don't want to hear. You know what I'm saying? Everybody is. Everybody wants to just go crazy. And I'm not saying that neither one is right. But it's been times when. How do you treat that information, Chat? <clears throat> I 
How do you treat, you know, it looks like his disposition is, hey, they were both beating each other up. Now, I'm not going to play the full interview, but he's basically, he says, yo, she's just as wrong. And that, that was the title. She was just as wrong as Diddy. Now, uh, he just recently did an interview with, I believe, Piers Morgan. Piers Morgan, right? And his interview... Let's see if we could get to... Uh... Okay. Here we go. So this is a segment. How many here. times did you personally witness him be violent towards women? This came out two uh, hours around ago. Around four or five times. So now, I'm going to be honest with you. And, and, and this is, you know, it seems like his memory is a little bit more clearer now. His memory of, of Diddy being violent after that a, after the video came out is a little clearer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he knows the amount of times. Look. Was that all with Cassie or was it Cassie and other one? I seen him with Cassie and I seen him with Kim Porter, his uh kid's mother. There have also been Again, I'm I'm not trying to besmirch anybody's name. I felt like when this bodyguard first came out. He was really like a leaf in the wind, almost trying to send a smoke signal to Diddy to say, Diddy, a lot of people want to hear from me. Cut me the fucking check, gang, and I won't do nothing. I'll shut the fuck up. I'll go on vacation like that driver in Tory Lane's case, right? He's waiting. He's waiting. I don't know if Diddy sent, sent over a small stimulus package, but after a while, he was like, you know what? I ain't really have much to tell. Cassie was guilty just as much as Diddy. Uh, I, you know what I mean? It's a clusterfuck, which is not pe what people wanted to hear. People wanted to hear how violent he was and how much of a monster he was. He didn't say that. The interview I just played, he's kind of, he's cutting it kind of even. The video came out now. He's lost all sense of cutting it even and he remembers all the times Diddy was giving out the beats. Listen to this. Allegations involving him and other men in terms of abuse. It's been times that I would stand by the elevator or I would go downstairs and say, why is this guy rushing me out? And I wouldn't see different men. I've never seen what they did, but I've actually stood there while they knocked on the hotel room door. When you go through life just paying your way out, I really feel like he might be sorry now. He's sorry that he got caught, but- okay, okay. Your reaction when you saw that video, uh, my reaction was... This is a reaction to uh, the viral video of him beating Cassie, okay? He's up to the same games. You know, my reaction was he never mentioned Cassie's name in that apology. You know, so to me, he didn't humble himself enough. Um, I think he said what people wanted to hear, not what he felt. That was just my opinion about mm. it. The, the actual level of violence has been very shocking to people to watch any man do that to a woman. Uh, particularly a very high-profile man doing it in such brazen public manner in a in a public place like that was even more shocking uh, that he had no compulsion about doing this where there may be cameras. But was that indicative of Diddy's general behaviour towards women? Uh, in, in, in my light, I would say yes. In my light, I would say yes. It didn't surprise me when I saw it because I've seen things to this nature before. I've gotten in between things of this nature doesn't that contradict what we just played? He's like, uh, I never seen the stompings before. I just, I seen a little fight and I'll get out, get in between it. Now he's saying, uh, that's the beat down. Like, yo, this beating looked like some shit. My nigga, this beat down looked like some shit you, you, you'd only see on live leaks. My nigga, this shit is bad. He, now he's saying, uh, actually now y'all jog my memory. Yeah. I, I, I've seen a couple of these beat downs. Yeah. Yeah. What? before and this was back in 2012 so oh, this nigga know the exact date now yo chat am i tripping am i tripping look predicament yeah if it was to get crazy yeah look you look at people when you look. say oh but your job was how many people work at the sanitation and everything else they hate their job and things go wrong but they never speak up because they afraid of how they're gonna pay their bills the next month so a lot of those things i was in that situation in that predicament look. yeah if it was to get crazy I wouldn't think about my job. Right. But then when you around certain people, you only going to do what you think that oh, no, person no, no. You look at people when you, the way the lawsuit came, she actually like the stomping out. And yeah, right. I'm going to be a hundred percent honest. I didn't think it was a wrong thing because I never. 
Yo, chat. 100%? I ain't think it was wrong. I ain't think it was that bad. I never seen the stompings. <laughs> then now it's like, oh, yeah, I seen them type of beat down. Yo, hold on. Hold on, man. Hold on, man. Hold on. My boy probably had some amnesia, though. Yes, I definitely did. Did she, when she said that I came in between them fighting, did I do that? Yes, I definitely did. But I'm going to be 100% honest. I didn't think it was a wrong thing because I've never seen the things that she actually like the stomping out. You ain't seen the stomping out? And the beating. The, and you ain't seen the beatings? I've never seen stuff like that. Oh. I would jump into something. Wait, he said you ain't seen the stompings or the beatings, right? In, in my light, I would say yes. In my light, I would say yes. It didn't surprise me when I saw it because I've seen things to this nature before. What? I've gotten in between. Nigga, we just seen stompings and beatdowns. He said he never saw it. Now he's saying he's seen it. Things of this nature before. And this was back in 2012. He's giving a date when he's seen it. Nigga, he, he, got, he got exact dates. So that's why I was so adamant on what I said yesterday after he posted that apology because it comes a time where it's like, you can't just say anything you wanna say and think that people gonna accept it. You know what I'm saying? I think I think it's a God syndrome, you know? The same way that he's been in a lot of trouble before and you could pay your way out. He knew those cameras was there, you know? But of course, as we heard, he came back to the hotel and he paid to get the footage, mm -hmm. but didn't know which cats he said inside a complaint that they gave her. Yo, chat, this is just my opinion. All of these people worked with Diddy and covering this shit up, man. Just be honest. Let, let, yo, let's be honest. Let's be honest. I'm not saying that Diddy's not a piece of shit, but Diddy, what this is indicating, that there was a culture of prioritizing money over morals, money and revenue and income and keeping a business going rather than being a whistleblower or standing up, or maybe that person felt like, well, if I say something, I'm snitching. But that was, like, again, the bodyguards are complicit. Who knows if, you know, the chief of staffs, the, the assistants, the, 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 the drivers, who knew? Like, you know, I think everybody was just like, let me just keep myself to myself. Her copy of the footage also. You know what I'm saying? So when you go through life just paying your way out, I really feel like, he wasn't sorry about that. Yeah, he might be sorry now. He's sorry that he got caught. But if that was a one-time incident, then I would say accept his apology. But I think in that apology, he said what he thought people wanted. To Pierce, I like you for your hard-hitting style of interview. If you don't immediately ask him, well, if you've seen things that, that, that was similar to what we saw in that video, how did you deal with that? You're the security. You're getting paid from this guy. How many daughters you have? You said four. How did you deal with this? Your peers, you gotta do, you gotta hold it down for the gang. Come on, bro. The hit. How many times did you personally witness him be violent towards women? Uh, around four or five times. Yo, Roger Bond. I I know you probably spoke to an attorney already, but I hope you did. Because your memory just kind of... Like, I think at first people would be like, oh, this nigga don't know shit about shit because you, you were acting too cryptic. Look like he just wanted some money. Now you seem like a witness, brother. <laughs> this sounds like some shit they ask you to understand. How many times you saw him being violent? Four or five times. And was that all with Cassie or was it Cassie and other women? Uh, I seen him with Cassie and I seen him with Kim Porter, his uh, kid's mother. Right, who's now sadly no longer with us. But what, what did you see him do? Uh, I've, I've seen them get physical. I've seen them get really physical, grab them up. It was one time that Cassie mentioned inside her lawsuit where she said she had to go over to the London Hotel. I was the one that was checking on her every day. At Chad, I, I know sometimes I hate when I pause, but it's important that we, we get what's going on. Um, maybe this is it. In 2009, after the blah, 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 that Miss Ventura, Cassie was speaking to another music manager at the party, it became enraged. She had hoped speaking to this manager would allow her to further grow her career and that Diddy would be happy for her, but instead he became extremely angry and pulled her out of the club uh, where the party was taking place. In the car leaving the club, he beat her, pushing her into a corner, stomping her on her face, and the security staff, Roger Bond, tried to stop the beating, but was unable to de-escalate the situation. When the car arrived at Combs' residence, Miss Ventura attempted to run away. He followed her and proceeded to kick her in the face. 
she was bleeding profusely and ushered into Mr. Combs home where she began throw up, to throw up from the violence incident. Upon recognizing the damage that he had done, the physical evidence of the abuse, Mr. Combs panicked and forced his staff to bring Ms. Ventura to a hotel suite at the London in Los Angeles where she was required to stay for a week. This is the problem I have with Ms. Mr. Roger Bonds. Roger Bond, you said that you never seen or witnessed any beatdown. Nigga, she literally mentioned your name with probably a beatdown that's worse than the one caught on tape. Listen to what she's saying happened. He proceeded to kick her in her face. She's bleeding profusely. And then she was dragged. I know it says usher, but it's pretty much forced into his home. And she began throwing up. And then after realizing, oh, she's fucked up. He panicked and forced his staff to bring her to a hotel. And you're saying that, oh, it was nothing, never that serious. It was just mutual, gang. This is crazy. You see why people are asking the questions about the friends of Diddy who are quiet, the associates of Diddy who are quiet, the people who frequently talked about and enjoyed the parties or the people who were either staff. Yes, y'all got to get asked a few questions because it's easy now to say, oh, I never seen none of it until y'all keep talking and y'all snitch on yourself. You see, if if if, if, if Mr. Um, Bonds was going to say he never witnessed nothing to the extent of the beatdowns and the stompings, brother, and you, he did say he should consult with an attorney, why did you just go on Piers Morgan and dis and basically say that the beatdown that Cassie didn't, um, admitted, you were there. This is crazy. Get really physical, grab him up. It was one time that Cassie mentioned inside her lawsuit where she said she had to go over to the London Hotel. I was the one that was checking on her every day at the London Hotel. By you know the way, so by the way, let me go back to the lawsuit. In the lawsuit, it says, during this stay, as her injuries healed, she began to fully realize that Mr. Combs' tremendous loyal network, yo, he's snitching on himself. Look, she's literally saying that she, Cassie's saying when she was sent somewhere to go heal up from her bruises and injuries, she was realizing everybody coming to check up on her, bringing her food, doing this in third, was Mr. Combs' tremendous loyal network not only knew about and witnessed his assault, but that these witnesses were not willing to do anything meaningful to stop Mr. Combs' behavior. This is coming from the same guy who said in the Danza interview, yo, why she named me in the lawsuit if she ain't gonna break off some bread to me? This don't sound wild to y'all? The nigga wanted to get paid from Cassie finally speaking out. When, when Cassie spoke out, she said, I couldn't have spoke out before because the niggas who was working for Diddy was making sure I didn't speak out. So she essentially, essentially Roger Bonds verifying the story is also verifying that he was one of the people making sure that she couldn't speak out on behalf of Diddy, the nerve of this nigga two years later say, wait, Cassie got a check? Why ain't get peace? No, this is crazy, Chad. This is crazy. This is crazy. I feel like I'm living in a simulation right now. See, and I seen him with Kim Porter, his uh, kid's mother. Right, who's now sadly no longer with us. But what, what did you see him do? Uh, I've, I've seen him get physical. I've seen him get really physical, grab him up. It was one time that Cassie mentioned inside her lawsuit where she said she had to go over to the London Hotel. I was the one that was checking on her every day at the London Hotel. You know what I'm saying? So I know that to be true. I've seen him get into some rustling and punching matches. And sometimes I felt like, what are you mad at? What are you upset about? Because it's it's a deeper anger when you hitting and punching a woman in that type of manner. And it's okay. It's, it's, it's understood if you have a problem with one woman and you seek things. But when you have a problem with every woman that you're dealing with, then I think that problem is inside of you. What did you see him do with Kim Porter? I seen him inside the car, grab her up. I seen him smack her, you know. And one thing about Kim is Kim got to the point where she fought back because she realized how powerful she was. It was one incident on Sunset Boulevard in front of the Beverly Hills Hotel where I just seen the car rocking back and forth. 
you know, of course he put everybody out the car, but I seen the car shaking. So I opened the door. I said, what are you doing? You know, what are you doing? You see where we at and what are you doing? And Kim got out the car like nothing happened. And she fixed her hair and she told him, she said, I want to see you explain to the media that scratch I'm going to put across your face if you put your hands on me again. Mm-hmm. And that, that, was, that was Kim attitude. Kim attitude was she realized that what he had to explain meant more to him than anything. And once she realized she had that power, she said, nah, not no more, because you're going to have to explain why you all mocked up. The incident you alluded to in the lawsuit. Mm, okay, that's an interesting one. That's an interesting one, chat. So there was there's a rumor that's been ongoing that there's a scar allegedly on Diddy's hand that's permanent. That was as a result of Diddy allegedly trying to put his hands on Kim Porter, her fighting back, and uh, and somehow she cut him or something of the sort. I, I'll look it up. Let me see. Kim Porter, Diddy, Mark on hand. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, okay. The scar on Diddy's hand from Kim. Well, there's a whole TikTok about this. Oh, Gene talked about Puffy, this. He came out with a new album, man, called Love. And he got a song on there called Kim Porter. How you feel about that? I think that's probably a great thing to do. You know what I'm saying? To honor the person that you said you love. To honor the woman who <laughs> gave you a scar on your wrist for the rest of your life that you could always look at and, and remember. You know what I'm saying? But he's going to always remember her. Kim was who Kim was. And then if he ever tried to forget her, all he had to do is look at his wrist. What you mean by that when you say that, you know, Kim Porter gave Puffy a scar? One night uh, when they were at, at home at Kim's house on 110th Street, he wanted to, you know, put his hands on her in the wrong way. And Kim took... By the way, I'm sorry for pausing it. Was it ever divulged if... um? Diddy used to try to do the freak offs with Kim Porter. I, I know with Cassie, yes, but did the freak off start at a certain time? I've never heard freak offs when it came to J Lo and Kim Porter. Those two I've never heard freak offs with, but we heard it a lot with Cassie. Hmm. Okay, I'm just asking. I'll look into that a little bit more. Let me play it though took one of those court screws and ripped his wrist up and hit an artery. And when she did that, he had to rush over to St. Luke's Hospital. I met him over there to the hospital. It was me, him, and Kim in the hospital when he was bleeding like crazy. Right, right. From your point of view, right, how would you describe Puffy and Kim Porter's relationship when you was around? Oh, it was volatile. It, it, It was like, you know, Damn it, she do. Damn it, she don't. Like, Kim could not be with nobody else, and he knew it. Puffy, he came out with a new album, man, called Love, and he got a song on there called Kim Porter. How you feel about that? I think okay. that's probably a great... All right. Wow. Okay. So so, so supposedly that's what happened. Let's see. Um, Kim Porter, Corkscrew Diddy. Let's see if we can find any more information. Let's hear this. Shout out to Art of Dialogue, by the way. Fuck with y'all. Kim Porter, we all know about the time that she cut Diddy with a core screw. Do you recall any other time that her and Diddy got into it? Well, I could hear it in the suite. Okay. Now, I want to hear about that incident. If not, we should get back into this shit. Okay. Um. All right. Let's keep it going. And so I opened the door. I said, what are you doing? You know, what are you doing? You see where we at and what are you doing? And Kim got out the car like nothing happened. And she fixed her hair and she told him, she said, I want to see you explain to the media that scratch I'm going to put across your face if you put your hands on me again. Mm-hmm. And that, that, was, that was Kim attitude. Kim attitude was she realized that what he had to explain meant more to him than anything. And once she realized she had that power, she said, no, nah, not no more, because you're going to have to explain why you all marked up. 
the incident you alluded to in the lawsuit uh, was in January 2009, uh, after Diddy learned that uh, she had spoken to another music manager at a party. He became angry. It says in the car leaving the club, he beat uh, Cassie Miss Ventura, pushing her into a corner of the vehicle and stomping on her face, and that you tried to stop the... Now, remember he said he'd never seen something of that sort. Usually if you're in a car, your security's riding with you in the car. So I would imagine he's in the car. Let's hear his answer. Beating, but were unable to de-escalate the situation. Is that an accurate assessment of what happened? I wouldn't say it was accurate because I did, did stop it. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't a club. It was in front of a black tire fair, actually. Mm. And uh, they came out of the black tire fair on Sunset Boulevard. And she was talking to a manager and I was standing there. And then he just came out and went crazy. You know what I'm saying? I didn't understand why, but I knew that we was on Sunset Boulevard and I, and I grabbed him and I said, yo, what are you doing? Like, what did she do? And she just ran on the side of the car and she bent down and he took off for me and he commenced to hitting her. And I pulled them off of her and I threw him in the car and then I grabbed her and I threw her in the car. And they, they continued to fight for about another block or two. And then he sat there and he just shook his head. He just shook his head and said, take me home. Once we got her home, he then had his assistant get a hotel room at the London Hotel. And they took her over to the London Hotel for a week. And my job was to just go check on her, you know, and I went and checked on her every day. She showed me some bruises on her chest. And she showed me her eye, and she, she just started crying. There are other parts of her lawsuit, which I want to just go through quickly with you to see what, whether you would concur with what she claims, that Diddy urged and supplied her to take drugs. Did you witness that? Well, I, yeah, I definitely witnessed that. You know, drugs was a was a, a regular thing there. You know... Yo, this nigga giving a deposition at this point. For both of them. And I didn't have no idea that he was forcing her, though. But, you know, that was the things that they would do. You know what I'm saying? partying, they would go to the hotel for the weekends. They would have, I guess, what they was calling the freak offs, I mm. guess. But uh and just, just to be clear on that, off. sorry, just to be ask you about it. the freak offs are where it is alleged and she alleges that that Diddy forced her to have sex with other men as he filmed it. That is a that is what a freak off is, is that right? Yes, that's what they say it is. And and do you believe that was happening regularly? Yes, I believe that. And yes, you, and you, and you believe that. she says that she was a completely Yo, this nigga remembers everything and believes everything now. Unwilling participant in that, that he was manipulating the whole thing? When I look back, he's, he's a king manipulator. He can manipulate anything and anyone. Money and power is what he's all about. Mm. You know, having conversations with him throughout the years. Uh, he has a God syndrome. So I definitely believe at the age of 19, seeking fame, wanting to be a singer, I think she allowed herself to be manipulated and be taken advantage of, definitely. You were with him a long time. What kind of person is he, Diddy? I mean, just from what you're saying at the moment, he comes across as a pretty unpleasant piece of work. Uh, he's an arrogant person. Uh, he has, he's a no-nonsense person. Uh, if he wants it, he feels that he can get it. You know, if he wants it, he feels that he can pay for it. If he wants it, you can't tell him no. And I think at, at that particular time, she was 19 years old. We're talking about a child. Mm. You know, at 19... Uh, going against someone, I think at that time was 38, 39, very strong, very powerful in the music business. And he took advantage of that. And he knew how to take advantage of that. How did it make you feel? I mean, you've already slightly alluded to this, but how did it make you feel? You're a security man. Your job is to protect people. When you watched a man who's a strong man, like Diddy, physically attacking women in the way that he did, what did that make you feel? I mean, it made me feel, one, like he was a... Uh, like he, one, he was wrong. I knew he was wrong. If it happened on my watch, I would get in between it. But I felt powerless because I couldn't get in between it if I wasn't there. Mm. I couldn't get in between it if you stay. And we've had conversations, you know. Me and Cassie had conversations. Me and Kim had conversations. And Kim was basically telling me, she said, Bonds, I got four of them. She said, I allow these things to happen as far as him messing around with girls and stuff like that. And she said, when I get tired of it, he's going to know. And Cassie, you got to a point where it's like you're talking to your daughter. And I'm giving her advice, but Cassie was so scared that the advice that you would give her, she would go back and tell him. And that would make you not want to talk to her or give her advice or tell her what she should do because she would go. That's interesting, and, and actually, even though like I think his this guy's credibility is a little bit shaky, I actually believe what he's saying here. 
okay. And by the way, I'm not. This might be a slight defense, even though I think they could they could do more. Cassie was a young young 19 year old girl. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if you told her something that could be for her benefit, she probably goes back and tells Diddy and be like, "Yo, you know your security guard. Yo, he probably trying to hit on me or something like that. But he be asking me why I be dealing with you like that. Like why I be letting you fuck other girls. You know what I mean? I, I can see that. I can see that a little bit. Go back and tell him. Maybe when she got high and they was alone, next thing you know, he would call you over the speaker and tell you to yo, come to my room, come to my room. Why are you talking to my girl? Why are you talking to my girl? So a lot of people say, why did you stay? And I, and I tell people, you know, me, myself, I was also manipulated. You know, he would also. Okay. All right. now. All right. now. So apologize to me like, yo, I don't know what's wrong with me. Yo, that's not going to happen again. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to do better. You know, you would see everything going all right for the next couple of weeks, for the next month or two. And then all of a sudden you would see him blow up again over something. Maybe she didn't want to go out. Maybe she didn't want to do something and he would totally lose it. And it's been times that we even had conversations like, yo, why? What's wrong? And he would get to the point where he would act like he was mad at you about it. So you would stop conversating about it. You know, he had ways to tell you, okay, enough is enough. Don't get in my business. And it made me feel like, a helpless person, but at the same time, if I stay, I felt like I could help. But if I leave, who's gonna help her? It was it was plenty of people there. Why did she say my name? Because everybody else would turn a blind eye to it. There is a suggestion. And that's one of the reasons that I. Stayed. So she he's saying that yeah, I was kind of complicit, but I wasn't like all the way complicit. I was trying to help in my own ways. Other niggas was just not trying to help at all. Okay, that's his story. Hey, right. There's a, su a suggestion, Roger, that he would keep tapes of celebrities in his homes when they were taking drugs. Hey, I see a lot of people on YouTube actually uh, talking about a Herbie 19. Um, here's the thing, and this is my thought about it. Being a 19 year old girl, number one, you're a legal person in the eyes of the law of whatever, if Diddy wants to be, I don't know how old he was at the point, fucking with someone who's 19, I think that's legal. Um, if you want to call it weird, creepy, you could do that, but that's legal, right? I think for the people who are saying, why are we acting like 19 is a child? I think we could probably say mentally, like mentally, 19, you don't know what's going, like, I remember me and I'm a guy, right? 19 years old for me was the, it was the best year of my life, but the most uncertain year of my life. But it's because I had fun with just going where life was taking me. I didn't know where I was going to be. If Am I, I going to be successful? I'm racking up all this debt in college. I'm mad impressionable still. I'm growing into myself as a man. Yo, 19 is a, is, is a time that if someone came in your life and they had tremendous power and tremendous money and could change your life left, right, and center, they could do things for you. And if they told you, hey, I, I could change your life, but you need to do these things, you might do it. So again, not a child. And, and let's, not, let's be clear with this. I'm not going to, we're not going to act like Diddy's a pedophile for fucking a 19 year old. Um, I don't know if he fucked kids, but, but 19 is not a child, but we have to think about the power dynamic. And also we got to think mentally, right? Like as a 19 year old girl, if you're not going to college, you're trying to figure out life, you're, you're, you're becoming a young woman. You're probably very malleable, right? Like if, if you meet a guy who's a billionaire, he tells you, yo, you're going to have everything I have. You're going to be flying private jets like you have the world at your fucking fingertips. But of course, your beauty and your 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 looks and, and your sexuality has to be open or you have to be cool with me fucking all these other girls despite what you, you feel. I could see how someone who's 19 is like, all right, like this is my lifeline. Like, you know, what other choices I have? And I, and I think in, in that sense, in, in that sense, you could be manipulated, right? No, of course, of course. Right. So uh, I'm thinking about mentally. Ooh, like, I think every time we, we keep talking about this age shit, especially coming off of the Drake shit, we're not talking about age in terms of, oh, you're fucking a, you're, you're, you're a pedophile. This is, yo, if a 38 year old billionaire comes to you with the world at his disposal, he snaps a finger. He has everything that you could ever dream of. Your dreams are his nothings. I'm pretty sure if he's like, hey, listen, y'all want to do A, B, and C, and you're like, oh, well, I've never done that, or uh, I kind of don't, uh, I probably wouldn't want to do that. 
like, it probably doesn't take much coercing, right? Like, nah, yo, come on, yo. Like, I thought you wanted this life, girl. Like, what's up? Yo, you with me. I'm Diddy. Like, nigga, I'm a fucking billionaire. What's up? Like, I could understand. It's a, and, and, and that's going more towards, I understand the thought. I understand the thought of her telling her telling um, Diddy what the security said. Because when women are that malleable, they do anything to become closer to the person who they feel is their lifeline. Yo, you know, you know, your friend was kind of hitting on me. Oh, you know, he told me I shouldn't be with you. Yeah. Like, you know, she, she she's fucking 19 years old. And <laughs> like, you know, I, I, I kind of get it. Or having sex, whatever it may be, uh, to be able to use against them later. Did you ever see any evidence of that? No, not again. Bro, and also, like, you know, j j let's speak on, like, a, a realistic perspective. Bro, if you ever meet a woman in their 20s, if you ever meet a woman in their 20s, even if they have a career or whatever, is those, the years that kind of turn them out is always those years that they're super malleable and they don't have, they're seeking what's next for them, right? And even if they go off the wrong path, maybe they date the drug. So, Diddy's apology to Cassie I really want to know in the comments below who took that apology seriously, man. This whole time he was saying that all the stuff coming out were lies, this, this, that. Like, it would have been better off if Diddy just didn't say anything. But he was probably, like, panicking, probably popping whatever pills he pops. And you feel me? With whatever woman or man that he's with. You feel me? But, man... I think Diddy should be very happy that he's a billionaire because I think it's over for Diddy in the sense that he could just go and make money the way that he used to make money. I don't think it, he'll be making money the same anymore. But you feel me? I really still do wish that he truly turns to a better person. But... It's a saying like you can't teach old dogs new tricks. Maybe this is just Lily who Diddy is and it's, he's too far gone. Isn't Diddy like 50 something? He might just be too far gone. Like it might be no changing him. He might just be this. He might fake act like he changes, but this is truly him and what he wants. Or maybe he used to be like that younger, but I mean, he was doing that like 46. He's it's only like, man, who knows, bro? It's just hard to think about everything. Um, I genuinely feel bad for Cassie. I honestly wish her the best and like I genuinely wish that Cassie you feel me that she gets the help that she needs if she still needs any like mental help or like anything for the trauma that she went through dealing with Diddy so yeah man all we can do is hope for the best and Diddy isn't the only person in the industry who is like this. There's multiple other people in the industry who are like this. People say Jay-Z and then it's a bunch of other people. One person I don't think that was on any of this stuff is like 50 Cent. 50 Cent trolls way too much and brings this up every single second for him to ever even be in something like that. You feel me? But hey, I feel like certain men like Diddy, when you've been rich so long, like you probably like some weird things. Or you're just like that. And like I said, he might just came from the area where men just, you feel me? Just, yeah, just put their hands on their woman, which isn't right. But, hey, man, that's, if you grew up like, like that, then, I mean, yes, you could be mad at him because it's not right. But it's like, it's like stuff from back then, like when everyone was smoking cigarettes at like 14, 15, or like, Let's say like a religion, how you grew up in your families. Well, a lot of people's families, like you inherit the religion that your family is like, that's like with Diddy's case, he just grew up and he might've inherited that, but we uh, will see what direction Diddy goes to boy, big acting news. Make sure you like and subscribe and I am out.